When I think back on being a kid, growing up with the Prime Minister as a dad, I remember a few things. Most memories are of the day-to-day, -day, car rides with the RCMP or visiting my dad at work. But in terms of his legacy, the events and decisions written about in the history books, I don't remember as much. I was 13 when he left. Rarely do we realize the big moments for what they are as they're happening, and hindsight most often gives us that perspective, a certain gravity that's only afforded through distance. But there is one moment, one historical event that I remember quite vividly. It was April 17, 1982. It was a gray and drizzly day, and I sat at 10 years old on Parliament Hill. And I watched as my dad and the nice lady who was the Queen of England on TV, but the Queen of Canada when she was here visiting, <laughs> patriated Canada's constitution. Now, at the time, I had no idea what that meant, possibly meant signing something publicly with the Queen, but I still knew it was a big deal. Of course, later, I'd realized just how big a deal it was. That day, Canada took a giant step forward, evolving into a nation of entrenched fundamental rights, a nation that vowed to recognize all people as equal under the law. Now, the execution of that promise has been imperfect, yes, but over time, we've gotten better at peaceful coexistence, guided by the foundational principles of compassion, equality, and dignity for all. I often think of that afternoon now that I'm much older and in the same position my father was in all those years ago. And I think about how my kids will reflect on their experience, having their dad as prime minister and living a pretty unconventional life. Xavier, Ella Grace, and Hadrian, what will they remember of this exciting era? Well, I like to think, and I hope, that just as I remember that day in April 1982, they will remember November 28, 2017. See, it was on that day that I rose in our Parliament and delivered a long overdue apology to Canada's LGBTQ2 communities. The story told in that speech are familiar to many of you, but left others aghast. Thrown in jail for being gay? Not in Canada. Losing your job for being trans? No. Nah. Rejected and shamed for, shamed for your two-spirit identity? No way. Outed in the local paper? Not in this country. An oasis of acceptance and progressivism. And yet, all true. That was a very dark, very true chapter of Canadian history. Very and disturbingly recent Canadian history, I might add. This was the kind of discrimination suffered by the queer community for decades. So this apology and our vow to never repeat the devastating mistakes of the past, well, we know it would be an important moment for many people, a bittersweet moment of recognition, a moment that would, hopefully, bring progress on a long journey towards healing. And that's why that November morning, I decided that my kids wouldn't be going to school that day. They were coming to work with Dad. The decision... <laughs> the decision for them to be there in the House of Commons, sitting in the gallery, surrounded by lifelong advocates, and looking down at me while survivors around them openly wept, well, that decision wasn't planned. But I woke up that morning and it hit me, hit me. Today's going to be a big day, a really big day. And I want them to be part of it. So they came. And Ella and Zav watched their dad stand on the floor of the House of Commons, surrounded by colleagues, and promise that we, as a nation, would do better. It was an incredible day that I will never forget, and I certainly don't think they will either. And I am deeply privileged to have been a part of this larger moment. 
I have to thank members of the We Demand an Apology Network, the LGBTQ2 Apology Advisory Council, and the Just Society Committee for EGAL for helping us do this properly. But perhaps even more deserving of our gratitude are the grassroots warriors, people who have dedicated their careers and, in many cases, their lives to fighting for LGBTQ2 justice in Canada and around the world. This apology and the many important gay rights victories of decades past wouldn't have happened without your efforts and your conviction. So thank you. <clears throat> Mes chers amis, je partage cette histoire avec vous parce que j'espère que dans 30 ans, lorsque mes enfants se rappelleront leur enfance, ce souvenir leur viendrait en tête comme un exemple de ce qui justifiait les heures que leur père a passées loin d'eux, les soirées où j'étais ici au lieu d'à la maison en train de les mettre au lit. De la même façon dont je me souviens de mon père étant assis avec la reine, j'ose espérer qu'ils se souviendront que ce jour de novembre a été un moment important pour tous les Canadiens. All societies can and should be judged based on how they defend the rights of minorities. Protection, respect, and support for LGBTQ2 Canadians must be entrenched, not conditional, but instead foundational. Now, as Steve knows well, this is a point that I bring up all the time at international summits, in private and public meetings with foreign leaders. Sometimes, I'll admit it, I'm forcing a conversation that makes people uncomfortable. But you know what? <laughs> I don't really care. <laughs> because if me asking about gay rights in your country makes you uneasy, it means you're not doing a good enough job. It means you need to do better. Last summer, I marched in Halifax Pride for the first time. And it was incredible. One of those glorious, you know, when it's beautiful in Halifax, it's more beautiful there than just about anywhere else. Except Vancouver. Vancouver, when it's a sunny day in Vancouver, is pretty nice. So it's the rarity of those two towns that really. But the streets were, of course, brimming with love and laughter, joy, and celebration. And as we were celebrating, you know, someone leaned over to me as we were dancing up the street. And they said, you know, it hasn't always been this way. They were part of the, one of the very first Halifax Prides, where people actually wore paper bags over their heads as they marched, needing to be seen, desperately wanting to be counted, but not yet ready to be named. Nous avons fait beaucoup de chemin dans ce pays et nous devrions être fiers de ce que nous avons accompli jusqu'à présent. Grâce à plusieurs d'entre vous qui sont ici ce soir, nous avons réalisé des progrès importants. Nous avons enfin modifié notre loi sur les droits de la personne afin de protéger les Canadiens transgenres contre toute discrimination. Nous avons lancé la stratégie du Canada pour prévenir et contrer la violence fondée sur le sexe. Et nous allons expurger les casiers judiciaires des personnes reconnues coupables d'infractions liées à l'homosexualité. Il s'agit là de grands et d'importants pas vers l'avant. Et je remercie chacun de vous du travail que vous avez accompli pour nous permettre d'en arriver jusqu'ici. Et pourtant, comme Hélène a dit, nous ne pouvons pas nous arrêter ici. Queer youth homelessness, inadequate support for folks who are intersex, disproportionate violence suffered by the trans community, discrimination in blood and organ donation. And yes, we're working on it, but I'm upset too that it's not there yet. And the intersectional marginalization of queer people of color. These are among the next frontiers of this movement. 
and I want to achieve real, sustained progress on these things by working with you, by taking my cues from your leadership and your expertise and delivering the kind of change that will impact so many. My friends, we all know there are many uncertainties in life, but know this for sure. I am on your side, and I will fight for you, and I will fight with you. Our entire government is committed to full equality for the queer community. You have my word on that. I want my kids to grow up in a world where people's differences are celebrated and, quite frankly, where they don't even understand that there could have been a time when they weren't. I want them to grow up in a world where career aspirations aren't hampered by gender identity or expression, where families are diverse and varied and all the more beautiful for it. In fact, that's what I want for all of us. More. More acceptance, more inclusivity, and more love. And we will get there because of all of you, because of all of us. Merci beaucoup, mes chers amis.